Here is part of my philosophy. Stories are interesting. Stories are accessible. Many people feel out of their depth with heavy conceptual language. But all people tell stories and listen to them. And church is all about telling stories. Here is one of my favorites. I've told it before, but it's been a pretty long time. It's a story for any church congregation, especially now. Once there was a famous monastery, a community of monks. At one time, this monastery had many young monks and the big church was full of the sound of the chanting. But now the community had fallen on hard times. People no longer came from far and wide to pray together. And just a few elderly monks were left saying their prayers with heavy hearts. Now on the edge of the monastery woods, there was a little hut. An old rabbi had built it. And sometimes he would go to this hut for solitude and prayer. No one from the monastery ever spoke to him, but whenever he appeared, the word would pass from monk to monk. The rabbi walks in the woods. And for the whole time the rabbi was there, the monks would feel sustained by his presence and by his prayers. Well, one day the leader of the monastery, the abbot, decided to pay a visit to the rabbi. So after the morning Eucharist, the abbot walked to the hut in the woods. The rabbi was standing in the doorway, smiling. He welcomed the abbot and offered him some tea. These two spiritual men sat together, mostly in silence. And finally, the rabbi spoke. He said, you and your brothers are serving God with heavy hearts. And you have come to me for a teaching. And I will give you a teaching. But... You may only repeat this once to your brothers, and then it must never be spoken again. The rabbi looked straight at the abbot and said, The Messiah is among you. There was a silence. And then the rabbi said, Now go back to your brothers. Without a word, the abbot walked back to the monastery, and the next morning the abbot called all the monks together. He told his brothers that he had been given a teaching by the rabbi who walks in the woods. He said that this teaching was to be spoken once, and then never again. He looked at each of his brothers and said, The rabbi says, One of us is the Messiah. The monks were startled. They asked themselves, what could this mean? Is Brother John the Messiah or Father Matthew or Brother Thomas? Am I the Messiah? What does this mean? They were all deeply puzzled by the rabbi's teaching, but no one ever mentioned it again. And as time went by, the monks began to treat one another with a very special reverence. They prayed together like people who had found a treasure. They lived together like people searching for a treasure. There was a gentle, wholehearted, human quality about them, which was hard to describe, but easy to see. Occasional visitors found themselves deeply moved by the life of these monks. And before long, people came from far and wide to be nourished, by their life of prayer and meditation. And young men once again asked to become part of the community. In those later days, the rabbi no longer walked in the woods. His hut fell into ruins. But the old monks who had taken his teaching to heart still felt sustained by his presence and his prayers. Religious communities have life cycles. We are in a difficult part of the cycle right now. We cannot even shake hands or hug these days. But we can still reverence one another. 
we can still see that Christ lives in everyone around us. We can still know that the Messiah is among us. In Eastern religious traditions, there is a greeting. It looks like this, with folded hands and a bow. It also looks like a gesture of prayer, doesn't it? That's because in these Eastern religious traditions, there is a recognition of the God, the divinity in the other person. And with this gesture, the divinity of the other is recognized. Well, our own Christian tradition agrees. In some of the higher churches, there is a custom of bowing toward an altar or toward the reserved sacrament in a tabernacle or an ombre. The so-called lower churches prefer the New Testament over ritual, but the New Testament itself talks about being in Christ or Christ in you, or as Jesus said, whatever you do for the least of these, you do for me. Christ is is in the person we meet. So in a time when we can't shake hands or hug, we can bow toward another person with folded hands. We offer that person our greeting and our respect and even our reverence. Why? Remember the story of the rabbi in the woods. The Messiah is among us. Christ is hidden in plain sight in your neighbor. So, look for him there. <laughs>